That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Love Lies Bleeding, the sophomore film directed by Rose Glass, which premiered at the 2024 Sundance Film Festival uh, and thereafter uh, showed uh, Berlin. And A24 is releasing it theatrically March 8th, 2024. What is Rose's first film? St. Maud. Oh, which, which we, we reviewed. We also both quite liked. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've seen this film twice now. I've seen it twice and I love it. The premise. Gym manager Lou falls for Jackie, a bodybuilder who is passing through town en route to a competition in Las Vegas. What's your pull quote? Sexy, violent, and sordid, Kristen Stewart gives a swoon-worthy performance in this devious switchblade romance. Mine. Love Lies Bleeding is a perfectly twisted romantic suspense thriller on steroids, literally. Mm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect. You had told me, because you... You talked about it when you saw it in Berlin. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was something special. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, there were so many moments where I was shocked. I laughed a lot. Yeah, it, it really is kind of like uh, it, this this black comedic vibe, like early Coen Brothers film. Or, you know, Fargo is not early Coen Brothers, but Blood Simple. Like, it has that vibe. So the story, it's the late 80s in the desert, maybe New Mexico, mm -hmm. and Kristen Stewart plays this woman who manages a gym. And her backstory is her dad runs like a local shooting range. Her mom has been out of the picture for some time, we don't know why. Her sister, played by Jenna Malone, is in a very physically abusive relationship with Dave Franco. Uh, oh, and Kristen Stewart's dad is played by Ed Harris. Yes. With an amazing hairdo. Yeah, and his name is Lou Sr. So she's she's a junior kind yeah. of. She's a big old lesbian. Mm -hmm. And one day while she's managing the gym, a patron comes in, a, a new member, played by Katie O'Brien. Jackie. And she's this very beautiful, very strong person. And Kristen Stewart is sprung. And I guess as is stereotypical for lesbians, they immediately like our couple like they move in together and they shack up pretty quick yeah but we learned that katie o'brien's character has been hitchhiking across america trying to get to vegas for this weightlifting contest and she has about a month to prepare so she's settling down with kristen stewart to prepare with the idea that the two of them will go to vegas to see her compete but at a point kristen stewart says you know the reason i've never left here and i'm hesitant to do so is because I worry about my sister and her abusive ass husband. So one day, Jenna Malone ends up in the hospital in a coma because Dave Franco whooped her ass so bad. And Katie O'Brien flips out. Probably due in part to her roid rage because she has now been taking steroids, thankful, thanks to Kristen Stewart giving them to mm -hmm. her. And she goes over to Dave Franco's house and brutally murders him. Mm -hmm. Like knocks his damn block off. <laughs> and Kristen Stewart freaks out and says, well, we got to fix this because you're going to go to prison if we don't. And somehow she knows how to dispose of a body. Yeah. And that's when we're clued into the fact that her dad just doesn't own the local gun range. And the gym. And the gym. He's like the region's like, Organized crime leader. He is the crime syndicate. Yes. Yes. And he's used his daughter to uh, get rid of bodies before. We get clues throughout the film that would lead us to believe that to be true. Mm -hmm. So she goes and dumps Dave Franco's body in this like canyon, mm -hmm. and she chooses to do that because she's like, oh, my dad dumped a lot of other things down there. So when they find Dave Franco's body, it's going to point to my dad. Well, she lights it on fire on purpose so that so that the cops will go there. Yeah. But uh, the dad figures out what she did and basically, through a series of events, convinces Katie O'Brien to kill a witness. But then Kristen Stewart threatens to tell on her dad, so now he wants to kill her. But in the end, she's able to track him down so that the police can take him. Mm -hmm. And yep. then the final scene of the film is Katie and Kristen riding off into the sunset. Side note, there's a dead body in the back of their truck they have to dispose Not of. Not quite dead. No, we can get to it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, this is, I mean, a super twisted love story. Yeah. It's very violent. Mm -hmm. but, um, but it also is very romantic. It's also quite sexual in a way that 
was a little shocking, but I thought that it was all very necessary. Yeah, because it shows the this very physical uh, connection. They intense also connection. It's intense, yeah. On Kristen Stewart's part. Mm -hmm. Like, she is very into... I think this movie's excellent. The one thing that didn't quite make sense to me is Kristen Stewart seems like the one in the relationship who would have said, at that point, I would have done anything for you. Right? She gives that energy. Like, she would have been the one to kill someone. Well, she's kind of beaten to the punch. Sure, but I, I, I guess I was having a heart... Like, I almost wish that the roles would have been flipped somehow. That it was Kristen Stewart who did something crazy. But it's interesting because we don't really learn a lot about Jackie and her experience, but we we get hints of it. But I mean, we meet her having sex with Dave Franco as a means to find employment. Right. Uh, so she's and, and she makes one phone call, which is very sad, but also kind of funny because she calls home in Oklahoma. And I assume I'm talking to a younger sibling and says, don't ever fall in love. Uh, but we learn from that information that she was basically kicked out of the house. Yeah. And her family wants nothing to do with her. So, and they think she's a. Fr I, I think they use the word freak or monster. So it yes. sounds like maybe her physical size, because she's a big lady, very strong. And she says talks about having uh, been fat as a child, and you know I think we can read into a lot of signs suggesting that maybe something she was physically hurt or damaged or molested or abused, and that might also feed into why she's put all of this time and passion into her physique. So she can never be hurt again. And I, th I think that Rose Glass has some really interesting um, subtext uh, regarding like Gulliver's travels with the Lilliputians. We see like a cartoon version of it, and that feeds into the very end. I'm gonna go through my notes. The witness Katie's character kills is this like local lot lizard named Daisy. Daisy played by uh, she's a scene stealer. She was so good. Anna Barishnikov is her <laughs> name. <laughs> First of all, her teeth. <laughs> You leaned over and you're like, does she have braces? I'm like, no, those are brown teeth. I was very confused by her teeth. Uh, she's so funny. And she is sprung on Kristen Stewart. She is. She's at the gym, not working out, but there to whatever chance she can hug up on Kristen Stewart and ask her to go to a place called Winkies together, which I'm assuming is like a lesbian dive bar. I actually think I could see her character getting like a best supporting actor nod because she was in the film, like she has, she's in three scenes mm -hmm. and I feel like she really brought a lot. She was stealing scenes like Bridget Fonda does in Jackie Brown. It, it's that kind of energy of like, you were just totally this wonky element. But... Daisy's important because when, on the night that Kristen Stewart has to dispose of Dave Frankel's body, she is transporting Dave Frankel's body in his car, which happens to be a classic um, Camaro. Well, I guess it wouldn't have been classic in 89 per se, but, uh, and then Katie's following behind in Kristen Stewart's truck. Mm -hmm. But while they're at an intersection stopped, Daisy runs up to Kristen Stewart and is like, oh, when can I see you? I waited for you last night. I thought we were going to go out. And, but then when she confronts Kristen later, she comes over to the apartment and she's like, oh, you know, I kind of thought it was funny that you were driving David Franco's car JJ's, the night, car, JJ's car the night he went missing. So now she's basically saying like, I know that you're responsible. She's blackmailing her. So she's blackmailing her. Into a right? sexual a relationship. Sexual, and I thought that was so funny because we see after like post coitus, the, Katie calls the apartment and Daisy answers like, don't you ever call here again. Kristen doesn't want you. And she's all happy, naked dancing. Mm -hmm. And Kristen Stewart is crying in the shower like she's just been sexually assaulted well because she kind of has she she's has. she's um the reason that jackie is calling is she's calling from jail in las vegas which we can get into we need to talk about that but scene. i mean their last interaction was a violent it was a violent party yeah. so it's and here she is being blackmailed by this well this and then the next fat. and then the next morning they go to breakfast daisy and kristen stewart and that's when you really see that daisy is no fool oh no she's yeah, I mean, she she's very clear on what she wants, which leads to then her being killed by, or so we think, Katie O'Brien's character. But I, yeah, I thought Daisy was such a well-written character. There's a theme throughout the film, especially like the first half, where Kristen Stewart smokes like a train, mm -hmm. but she's listening to like smoking cessation tapes, mm -hmm. which I thought was funny because once we learn her background, which is that she... we. We can safely assume, I think, that she was part of her dad's organized crime outfit. His little chain gang, yeah. And then we get these interesting flashbacks that are shot in, like, red light. 
that made me think that Kristen also helped her dad kill people. I think she did. So it's almost like she's she's turned over a new leaf in life, and then and then all. But it's like she can stop killing people, but she can't stop smoking. That's uh -huh. how I took it. Yes. Well, and then we get radio. Uh, Who is it? George Bush's voice talking about that's crack cocaine. Uh, it's funny how we're on the periphery, like all these terrible things going on in the period, because there's one, it, I pointed the poster out to you in the hospital hallway of, uh, it's a yes. blonde woman's face and it says, how about dinner and a movie and a talk about AIDS? Yeah. <laughs> so when Katie's character is at the gym for the first time, there's an incident where like a man is hitting on Katie and then she kind of rebuffs him. He grabs her, she punches him, the man punches her. It gets uh, de-escalated, but now Kristen and Katie are hanging out at the gym after hours. And you can see that Kristen's character is trying to, like, appeal to Katie. And all of a sudden, she offers her some steroids. Mm -hmm. And I thought that scene was so funny. Because mm -hmm. at a point, she goes, well, do you want to do a little bit? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Bitch, like I'll, a little bit. I'll, put, I'll give you a shot in your butt. Oh, I thought it was so good. And then the representation of Katie taking the steroids. Because there's, like, a fantastical nature to the movie yeah. where we see Katie sort of growing like the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. And we'll get to the main part at the end. But I thought that was very well done. Um, it's also interesting because she, she is flirting with those these muscle queens in the gym. And uh, because she's still really looking for a place to stay. We see her, she's after Dave Franco, she stays the night in, 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 in an underpass. Well, she's a hustler for sure. She she is a hustler, but and she does say that she likes both men and women. But uh, I think that all of these uh, vying for control of her is interesting because the night that Jenna Malone gets beat up so bad is after Dave Franco realizes that Kristen Stewart is dating this woman he'd slept with. Yeah, the first night uh, they spend together, Katie and Kristen. The next morning, Kristen's up. <laughs> I think Krista Stewart looks so good in this movie because she just looks greasy and tired and always has a cigarette. And she's trying to cook Katie breakfast with a cigarette in her mouth. <laughs> and then Katie tells her, like, oh, yeah, this is good. Although next time, basically, I want, like, an egg white omelet. Mm -hmm. And Kristen's response is like, you can tell that she must really be into this lady because we see her dealing with customers earlier on. And she's so rude she's not and apathetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she reminded me, uh, I know the description you are giving of her is the most beautiful, but she has this beauty to her and th this kind of angular thing. It reminded me of late 70s Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, Chris, too. she's beautiful, but mm -hmm. I think she just looks so, she looks so perfect for this role. Yeah. Uh, oh gosh. So when Katie goes to confront Dave Franco, she bashes his head into a coffee table and literally knocks off the lower part of his jaw. Mm -hmm. And you see it quite a bit. And it's it's unbelievable. <laughs> she was really that mad. Um, I thought this, the, I really liked the look of the film, the cinematography. It was shot by Ben Fortisman, who previously worked with Rose Glass on St. Maud. I really yeah. liked it. Mm -hmm. And I think the shot of when we see Dave Frankel's car set on fire in the canyon and the smoke rising mm -hmm. there's like a long shot of it mm -hmm. that i thought worked really well well yeah and because you know, also like it's because it's effectively a smoke signal uh yes but i'll in the it's we're definitely in the lesbian lovers killing people territory which is a kind of a trope of lesbian cinema but this had a nice mix of something like desert hearts mixed with bound yeah to me Kristen cleaning the crime scene i thought was really good because at first it's not quite clear She's too good at it. She's and it took good. me a second to... But but it's very obvious towards the end, like, this is not the first time this lady has cleaned a crime scene. <laughs> Even this, what she puts on is this, like, red jumpsuit. Like, she knows what she's doing, but it took me a second. I thought it was so clever that we... Because when we first meet Ed Harris, who looks like the Crypt Keeper... It's a breathtaking cut to him. Oh, yeah. The first shot of Ed Harris was like, and I already knew what he looked like because you told me, but even with that, when, we, when you first see him, it's like, whoa. He looked like the Crip Keeper mixed with a Cocker Spaniel. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And then walking where, the, where we saw the screening last night, Ed Harris's star was right up there. Yeah, we saw it at the Egyptian <laughs> yeah. Theater and his star was right in front. I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. um, the, so the competition in Vegas. So, after Kristen Stewart disposes of the body, she tells Katie, okay, 
I know what I'm doing. We have to lay low. We just have to stay here and act normal. And Katie's like, no, I have to go to Vegas tomorrow. Kristen's like, ah, can we talk about it later? Because I have to go clean the crime scene. But of course, Katie does more steroids, gets all amped up. And, and, she, then, and she has just murdered somebody, so it's traumatic. And then she ends up leaving, mm -hmm. uh, hitchhiking to Vegas. After bashing, she headbutts Kristen Stewart. That's right. Mm -hmm. Gets to Vegas, competes in the competition, and... And wins. Well, she's doing her solo portion, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden starts hallucinating. Which was a pretty wild scene. Oh yeah, it is just her solo portion. Yeah, she hasn't won. She, it's her solo portion. And she's. it looks like she might win because she's doing really well. Uh -huh. And the crowd is captivated. And then she starts seeing stuff like the, the, the killing and the canyon. And then she. it looks like she's birthing Kristen Stewart out of her mouth. I thought that was shocking. And then as the audience, it's like WTF. And then all of a sudden we snap back into reality and we see that Katie has vomited all over the stage. So the audience is in shock. The judges are in shock. And Katie turns to go look at the other contestants and they have these like warped faces, like demonic faces. So Katie assaults one of them and like brutally beats this lady. So now she's in jail. Yep. Mm -hmm. And she ends up calling Ed Harris for help. And that's when he realizes what's going on. So then things escalate very quickly from there. Mm -hmm. Um, Katie kills Daisy. So now Kristen has to try to dispose of that body. And Ed Harris is beckoning. Right. And while she's doing that, who shows up at her apartment? The FBI, who had already been to the gym looking for her. Mm -hmm. Because they know her dad is an organized crime person, but they don't have any witnesses. Because all those witnesses are in that damn canyon. And they're also looking for the mother. Because we find out, 12 years ago when the mom went missing... She had basically intimated that she was going to tell on Ed Harris. Yes, and I think they are trying to uh, motivate Lou to talk to them by keep talking by talking about her mother and suggesting that right. he also killed her. But while the feds are at Lou Jr.'s house, Kristen Stewart's house, Daisy's dead body is wrapped in a rug behind the couch, and that damn cat is like licking the blood. I was so stressed out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This movie, you know, talk about like suspense thriller. This one really had me like stressed out in a very good way. Mm -hmm. um, one character trait of Ed Harris is that he collects larvae, mm -hmm. which is I think like big maggots. Yes, a Hercules larva, which so these large, the, the, like overly large bug specimens. Basically. And at one point, because Kristen Stewart says, "I'm going to tell on you." And Ed Harris says, are you threatening me? And she goes, yep. And he gets really mad and starts tearing up his office with all the larvae. And then all of a sudden he grabs one and eats it. Oh, yeah. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> well, and that's also symbolic about what he's doing with his own young, right? Yeah. So Kristen goes to save Katie's character because she presumes that she's at Ed Harris's mansion in the desert somewhere. And when she gets there, Jenna Malone is there. Who she forgot to pick up from the hospital. She's and Jenna's crazy. mad. Like, Jenna's, would... Jenna's mad that her uh, deadbeat husband is dead. Right. But, so they get into a little argument, but then she's like, where's Jackie? That's where Kristen, that's where Lou realizes that she's kind of wasted her life here for her sister who just isn't... Is, she's hopeless. She's hopeless. And, and she... She wasted her time. But she finds, I said Jackie, she finds Katie's character uh, and tied up and then tells her, like, I'm here to help you. Because at first, Katie's character tries to shoot mm -hmm. Kristen. But she's like, no, I'm here to help you. Just do what I say. And Katie is like, oh, I just, like, everything's going to shit, blah, blah, blah. And I thought it was so funny that Kristen said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. <laughs> like, What? This lady's messed up. Yeah, well, because they're trying to go through, like, she goes, well, they, JJ deserved it. And she's like, well, what about Daisy? It's like, well, my dad told you to do that. So. But the most berserk scene in the film is Kristen tells Katie, go, run. Run to, like, the highway because the feds are coming. And if they catch you, you're going to jail. I'm going to wait here and get my dad so they can arrest him. But Ed Harris shoots Kristen Stewart in the leg. So she's incapacitated. And he's about to kill her. But... Katie can hear Kristen kind of crying for help. And all of a sudden, Katie turns into like the Incredible Hulk. Mm -hmm. Like, there's that one movie where the women turn to giants. It'll come to me later. But 
Katie literally turns into a big giant mm -hmm. and like stomps over like King Kong to Ed Harris and holds him down so that the police can come get him. And that's when they escape. Which I think is sub symbolic of Katie sort of rescuing Kristen. Yes. But I think the visual was so, so fun. And then we see the two of them running off in like a fantasy sequence. Like the, their heads are in the clouds. They both become giants, which I thought was a really uh, unique way to visualize how they feel. Yeah. Uh, it, like this swoon-worthy romantic love, this, this honeymoon period. And then... I mean, maybe this is the most twisted part is, so now they're, you know, the final scene is them riding off into the sunset, but we have to remember Daisy, her body's in the back of the truck, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden we hear something moving in the back of the truck and we realize Daisy's not dead because she was shot through the cheek. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, what are they going to do with her? And while Katie is passed out in the truck sleeping, Kristen pulls over and chokes Daisy to death. And then dumps her out in the desert. Yeah, like she's, she's like, like she's gonna bury her. She's smoking a cigarette. And then I love that there's an instrumental version of this Johnny Jewel song called "Tell Me," uh, which was for Ryan Gosling's film Lost River, performed, oh. performed by Sarah Sharonin. Uh, but I, I, the perfect finale. Yeah, very dark, funny, disturbing. It made me sad just because I feel like these two characters, their shit is hopeless. But you know, but they maybe not. They, I mean, uh, I, I guess they found love in a hopeless place. They but sure like... did. <laughs> I love the score by Clint Mansell. Um, Kristen's reading this book that I had uh, was ignorant of, but I feel like I have to read called Macho Sluts. Oh, which is a collection of uh, short stories about leather and S and M lesbianism. Oh, what would you give Love Lies Bleeding? Four out of five. I would give it four out of five. Anything else? No. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye.